All right, it's later in the afternoon. We ended up picking up all the traps on our way out. I had church, so uh, we just picked them up, headed to the house. I went to church, and when I got back, I ate because I was hungry. And now we're back out. We're gonna put back some of those uh, raccoon traps. Me and Frank went to uh, the spot where we're gonna put them. Where we're gonna, gonna, gonna put them? Went to the spot where we were gonna put them, and uh, didn't see enough sign or trails that I felt comfortable enough putting one on there. So we just went ahead and skipped that. Now we're back to the round of general same area. Found a couple things that looked like trails, but I mean, look at this. We got Floton, and I mean, this is all still just jacked up from the storm. I'm sure, y'all probably tired of hearing about the storm by now, but. It's a fact of life, you know? So a lot of this stuff, you can't really tell if it's a trail or not. Kind of difficult, but Frank did find, oh look, there's some more prints. But Frank did find uh, some prints along this, what we thought was a trail, which obviously now we know it's a trail. But right there, y'all can see right there in that little cut right there, they got some fresher tracks. And then I just looked down while I was talking to y'all and that's an older track. So we know they are coming through here. Not sure exactly where they are coming from, but that's the direction they are heading. So. Unfortunately, that mud's too soft, that floton's too soft, like literally too soft. You can stick that anchor down in there and pull it right back up with two fingers, so. I think I'll put it right here on this hard bank, and uh, it's kind of close to where, I mean, they should see it, should smell it, so let's get that taken care of right fast. All right, so, this bank right here should be hard enough, there's a bunch of roots in it, so. If anything, we ain't even gonna be able to get it up when it's time. I reckon they're coming this way, probably coming right through here and coming down. Kind of want to just put it in the side right here. I mean, we can put it right there. He'll reach in there and grab it. Hmm. I don't think it's gonna do no good here. Let's see. So, if you have a suggestion on how we should set this trap, leave it actually, in the comments below. Actually. Yeah, do what he said. All right. Well. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, I guess. I'm just gonna shove that sunbooker right there and we're gonna see if it works. What I'm gonna do is put a bunch of food around it that way, even if they don't get right on it, they'll start eating on the ground and they're gonna, they're gonna stick around till they know everything's gone. Yeah, that's some hard ground there, cuz. <laughs> yep, they're not coming out of that. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this right here on the side. Like so. Well, first I gotta set it. Don't be such a couillon. Ooh, they got ants right here. That's terrific. Well, that ain't no good. Now I gotta get this thing out of here because I don't want no raccoon trapping ants. Man, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Is it not coming? Not really. Oh, there it goes. A little bit. Yeesh. Well, hold that thought. Hopefully it's focused on my face. Probably not. But anyway, there's a root right here. This is where we're gonna put it. I'm just gonna wrap this cable around like I did the trees. In the video that y'all never got to see because, uh, well, it got deleted. That was the coyote video. And there we go. It's hooked on that root real good. Go ahead and set my trap. Stab her in the ground over here. A little further away, like so. Now, it don't matter with raccoons. They don't care about any of this. All they're going to be looking for is that food. So what I did, something a little different this time. We took some cat food and some marshmallows. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some all over here because in case they miss it. That's a lot of food, but you know what? I'm not driving. I don't even know what that means, but. All right, moving on to the next one. Look at all this sign. This looks like coyote tracks. Comes up kind of through here where Frank's standing ahead some. And then all over there, that's all raccoon tracks. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's some all the way up through there, as well as some raccoon tracks right there, up in there. So on this little thing right here, it's a bunch of rabbit poo. So we got a lot going on right here. So we went ahead and put this dog proof right here. I wish I could put a whole set for a coyote, but this mud is so soft, it's just really not a good place to put a set, at least not as far as I know. If you're an experienced trapper, you know how to trap in this soft, soft mud. I don't know, can I put a regular foothold set in there and just cover it with some soft dirt or, man, I don't know. I guess I could have attached it to that tree like I did the 
dog proof, but I don't know. But that's probably gonna be it for the raccoon traps. Let me go set out a coyote trap somewhere else. Show you how I do that, since again, that was in the last video that didn't come out because I lost it. It just disappeared on me. All right. All right, so here we are. This is where we're gonna put it. This is that's the trail right over there. Is where the uh, those coyote tracks and where I put that that dog proof trap at. So right, y'all. This is where we're gonna put our trap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig out a spot to put my trap, a little trap bed. Ooh, that's just strange dirt. I'm gonna dig me a hole. This is where we're gonna put the bait at. Ain't easy with this little trowel. So you want to dig this hole at least a good 18 inches. So that whenever you put your bait in here, they can't just reach it. They're going to have to sit there and work for it, dig for it. That's going to give them more opportunity to stick their foot on that trap. All right, so Frank let me use his hammer. Now, as far as a hammer goes, I don't know, I kind of like that hammer here. But this son bugger right here, got this little nifty doodad on the handle. You shove that in there, give it a little twist and a little turn. Pull that sucker out and you got some dirt. I like this. I'm gonna have to make me something like that. For sure, for sure. We good up, we deep in there now, boys. Look at that. I'll be a suck egg mule. That is beautiful. All right. Now, I'm gonna make this kind of like a step down set. So that this is higher when they come in to investigate that hole, I think I have to set that uh, all that weight down right here, which gives it a, a better chance of them hitting that pan and setting that trap off. Make me a little hole to put my chain down in. Let's see how the trap sits in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good hard, hard set. We can even. Put it right there too, and the dog flipped it that way. Seen that on the video. So there we go. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and drive the chain right down in there. So this is your anchor, just like we did the raccoon traps. This one's a little bit different. It's kind of like a steel pipe with a little pern on it. Goes in there like so. Let me tap this one more time. Get a little hole for the chain to hide in. All right. Stab that right there. I'm gonna use my heavy hand, my heavy hammer. That's some good mud right there. Go all the way to the swivel. Woo! Can't even get the steak out. There we go. Get that chain a tug. That sets the anchor. Pull my chain up in there. What I'm doing is making sure that thing is good and packed tight in there because you don't want it to move at all. In case that coyote steps on the jaws and not the uh the pan because if it moves what oh, a thump your thumb's in a bad place there yeah i ain't worried about that <laughs> only hurts for a little while all right chain back in there like that make sure there's no sticks or nothing that's gonna get in the way of this thing closing we'll pack some dirt around these jaws Make sure it's good and tight in here, where it's not gonna move, just like I said. What I'm gonna do is they got a latch on here. Right now, this pan has to go a long ways for it to, to close. So it's kind of like a safety. If I bump this, it ain't gonna, ain't gonna matter. So I flip this jaw up so it don't catch my finger. And we're gonna go down until we hit click. They got a little bump right there on that dog. Whoo, kind of scared me a little bit. But anyway, there you go. All right, now we gotta get sure. Wanna make sure no mud is under that jaw, which I think it is now. Let me get a piece of stick, get that out of there. There we go. Wanna make sure no mud gets underneath there. Stop that pan from going down. All right, now no matter where he steps on this thing, this thing ain't moving. So we locked in real good. So now we need to hide the trap. Because if he sees that, of course, he ain't going to like it. This I didn't do the first time with that first coyote we caught because we didn't know about it. We learned it in that class that we just took. What was that yesterday, huh? Yeah. yeah. Just a 
it don't want to come on. There we go. So we got us a little bit of peat moss right there. I'm just gonna take it in this bucket, this uh, sifter, which we got at that glass. I'm gonna set it right here on top of this trap. And I'll hide the trap with it. And the reason we're using peat moss is because peat moss is spongy. Look at that, it don't pack down. So even if it gets under that pan, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. So now, I'll cover it real good. We don't want too much, we just want it to where it's, where it's just covering the trap. I'm gonna take my brush. See my pan real light. Alright. Go a couple more shakes on top just to hide that. I don't know what that is. Get that out of the way. Alright. Now that it's covered with that, we're gonna blend it in with this other mud. Make it look more natural like. have to be perfect. That right, looks a little bit more natural. Got a little dirt in the hole. Let's get some of this dirt out of this hole real quick. Now that it's pretty much set, might take a little bit of stuff put around it. What you want to make sure of is there's no sticks, no rocks, no nothing hard, no clumps of mud. That's going to stop them jaws from closing all the way. Might just throw a little something something to help guide his foot where we want it. Take that in there so it'll poke him in the foot if he tries. So. That's kind of good. And if he steps anywhere right there, hits that pan, that's, a, that's it. So now that we got it all set up and ready to go, we need to bait it. Where that bait's at? First of all, we got this bait, this Minnesota brand Predator bait. Probably just a bunch of chunks of meat. And so you want to take about, about a teaspoonful, get that on a, on a stick like that. I'm going to drop it in that hole. I'm going to push it kind of a little bit in there to where they're going to have to work for it to get it. You're not going to be able to just reach right there and get it. So that's all you need of that. A little dab will do you. I'll we'll take this. This uh, canine force lure. And this is just to get them coming by. So I'm going to go ahead and just dab this little stick. That's already right here. I'll we'll put a little bit in it. Leave it sit right there. Now that'll attract them from a further distance. I might catch that on the wind. And then got a little red fox urine. Everything hates a red fox, apparently, so I'm not even going to smell it because I know what pee-pee smells like. And this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit right there. Got it down the side to so, make your bag smell good. Now, what that's going to do is also going to be a lure, get them coming by. And another thing is since they're territorial, they're probably going to try and pee on that spot. And if he pees on that spot, he's probably going to step right there with his back foot when he goes to cock the other one. He's going to get him a back foot catch. So. Well, it's the following day from when Frank came out here and got that uh, raccoon and let that possum go and checked a couple traps already. Nothing. Except for this one. Got us another possum. These little guys are always getting their hands caught in the cookie jar. He's just chilling. It's like, man, it's some BS right here, Bo. And unfortunately, I didn't bring my gloves or anything. Uh, you know, I've been striking out a lot lately, so I didn't bring anything. But I want to release this guy. I'm not really uh, targeting this particular fella. Really looking for some raccoons and coyotes. So we'll go ahead and release him. Hopefully, I don't get bit. This ought to be entertaining, at least. Wasn't so bad. Well, I was going to show you the little guy uh, walking off because it looked like he was just going to take his time. And then uh, I set him down. He just stood there for a second until he realized he was free and he was gone. So 
so I never made it back to the camera in time. But they still actually had some of the bait at the bottom of the trap, some marshmallows and some uh, cat food. So I just reset the trap right there. And uh, there you go, ready for another one. Hopefully, obviously, it's a uh, raccoon this time instead of a, another possum, but yeah, I know. It is what it is. <clears throat> well, y'all, no coyote. But we did get a raccoon. There he is, mean mugging me. Sitting there just trying to dig out. Boy, did you make a mess of that trap circle. Jeez. -um. So I'm gonna go ahead and dispatch this little guy and then uh, I'll meet y'all back at the house. Looks like somebody killed himself a snake too. Right there on the walk to the trail. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure he's dead first. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in the bucket here with this raccoon. I'm gonna take his skin too. Ain't, a little, ain't no sense in letting that go to waste. I don't know how long he's dead. I might even attempt to eat him. Well, there he is. There's the raccoon. I had to uh, rinse him off pretty good. He was covered in mud from rolling around in that dirt. But while waiting for this guy to dry off a little bit before I clean him up, got this mean looking fella hanging up. I'm gonna go ahead and skin him down. All I'm gonna do is cut a circle around his neck like that. Put a line straight down his belly and we're just gonna peel him right off and what i'm gonna do with that skin is i'm gonna put it in a mason jar and i'm gonna fill it with a 50 50 solution of rubbing alcohol and glycerin and uh that'll tan it right up preserve it and i'm gonna stretch that sucker out and slap them up there in the nest as a decoration but that's pretty much gonna do it for this one folks thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it hopefully next time we pick up the trapping vlogs it'll uh, be with another coyote and you actually get to see the full video of uh the coyote trapping but anyway make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like the video subscribe if you haven't and uh we'll catch you on the next one